So before I, I read to you what Mauricio wrote in his message, um, we're in the weeks before Pesach. It's in uh, two weeks. And always before this, this Moed, we find ourselves in a greater spiritual battle than usual. And this is normal because we're not only cleansing the, the chametz, the yeast out of our homes, but we're also cleansing it from our minds, from our hearts. And this drash on Tazria by Mauricio will give us a lot of food for thought, as well as some of the practical tools to deal with the battles of our minds. And let me tell you, I've already used them this week after I read his message. You know, last night, as I was thinking about it, I remember Rav Shaul's message in Ephesians 6, which tells us to be strong in the Lord and to put on the whole armor of God so that we can take a stand against the adversary, whatever that looks like in each of our lives. Our struggle is not against the physical, rather it's against the dark forces of the spiritual realm. And for those of us who trust in our Boreolam, thankfully, we have his hope. So here's what Mauricio said in this message, Tezria. He said, what I love about the Torah is that everything in it is interconnected. It's as if we are talking about a complex system that is interwoven, allowing us to access the, to access the most far-reaching ideas that anyone can imagine. And in the final analysis, we discover that divinity is the thread that connects everything. Now, we've been reading about the principles of purity, which is tahor, and impurity, which is tameh. And these two states of being are conditional upon us being able to appear before the eternal in the sanctuary or not. And when we study and delve deeper into them, we find that these states of being are not simply referring to moral qualities, but to certain values and principles that the Torah develops through the following in this portion, conception and childbirth, which is Tezria, the Nida, menstruation, bodily secretion, such as seminal fluids and blood, contamination from contact with corpses, Sara'at, which unfortunately has been wrongly associated with leprosy or Hansen's disease. It's a skin disease, but we don't know which one it is. We can say that purity, tahor, is everything that is connected to life, to hope, to possibility, and to growth. Now, who is life? The Borei Olam. He's life as we can see in Psalm 36, 9, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light shall we see light. When we disconnect from the Borei Olam, from the source of life, we become like those described by our prophet Jeremiah, who said in chapter 12, 13, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and dug cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns, that's wells, that can hold no water. It's here that impurity or tame becomes meaningful. According to some scholars, tame comes from the word satum in Hebrew, which means closed. And tame connotes any being that is disconnected from its source of life without the possibility of connection, growth, or movement. So we can conclude that the realm of impurity, Tame, is related to death. It's about this that Yeshua said, he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living in Mark 12, 27, since the Hebrew concept of life transcends the Greek concept of the body. Because even when we are dead, we continue to be connected to the divine. Now listen carefully to this next part. This week, I had an opportunity to read several articles about the triune brain. In the transcript of my message, I am including the links if you are interested, but basically, I want to refer to the fact that we have the cortex of the brain, which is equivalent, which is equivalent to the largest brain mass and performs functions related to thought, reason, 
and language. So that's the largest part, the cortex. Then we have what's called the limbic system, where our emotions reside. And, but this is a smaller mass than the cortex. And finally, we have the reptilian system, which performs the function of instinctive and automatic behavior for self-preservation. And it occupies even less space than the other two systems. So we have the cortex, which is the largest. Then we have the limbic, which is next, and the reptilian system, which is the smallest, and that's for instinct. Now, looking at these images, I was amazed at the design of the eternal and which system should have dominion over the other, considering the physical space that God gave each structure and function of our brain in the order of more space to less space. The Boreo Lamb gave more space to thought, reason, and communication. He gave less space to emotion and pleasure, and the least space for the instinct, the part of our nature that is innate. It's not reflective, but is designed for our survival. This showed me how our environment exerts chronic pressure upon these well-designed systems to generate imbalance in our behavior. Now, what, it, what does this science class have to do with this week's portion? Can you tell me? Is science connected with the Torah? Yes, very much so. Without the Torah, there is no science. All science does is observe God's creation and recognize the power of life. And without science, we cannot confirm the, the Torah. Now, simply knowing that the cortex in which God gave us more power to think, to reason, and to communicate we can better deal with the other two systems of emotions and automatic responses for self-preservation. We can reason with ourselves. Didn't God tell us that in Isaiah to come and reason with him? Now let's look at chapter 13 of Vaikra, Leviticus, where the subject of tzara'at, which is that skin disease, is addressed. Now this is in the Talmud, where it says, Rabbi, Shmuel Barnachami says that Rabbi Yochanan says, leprous marks afflict a person for seven sinful matters. One, malicious speech. Two, bloodshed. Three, an oath taken in vain. Four, forbidden sexual relationships, for arrogance, for theft, and for stinginess. To corroborate this, our sages cite various passages, passages in the Tanakh. First, Psalms 105, five, Psalms 101.5. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, I will destroy. That's malicious speech, Lashon Hara. From Samuel 2, 2 Samuel 3.29. And let there not be missing from the house of Joab, one who has a discharge or who is a leper, or one who leans on crutches, or one who is killed by the sword, or who lacks bread. That is bloodshed. From 2 Kings 5.27, not man's leprosy shall stick to you and your children forever, referring to the evil that befell Gehazi with his vain oath in the story of Naaman. Next, and the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great afflictions because of Sarai. Abram's wife, referring to forbidden relations. From 2 Chronicles 26, 19, which recounts the episode of King Uzziah, but when he grew strong, his heart was lifted up so that he corrupted himself and rebelled against the Lord his God. That's referring to arrogance. Next verse comes from Leviticus 14, 36. And the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest goes in to see the mark, that all that is in the house not become impure, and afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. Our sages explain this verse by saying, he gathered property that is not his, therefore let the priest come and scatter his property. That is theft. And finally, stinginess. 
as it is written in Leviticus 14.35. Then he that owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, There seems to me to be as if it were a mark in the house. It says in the Talmud in Arachin 16a, and the school of Rabbi Ishmael taught, the verse calls him the one who owns the house because it is referring to one who is stingy and one who treated his house as being exclusively his and did not allow others to share his property. Regardless of what we conclude from the above, it's evident that all the actions describe, described which produced Sara'at originate in thought. In other words, in the stimulation of our amygdala and hypothalamus, as Yeshua said in Mark 17, 5 and 18, 20 to 23, there is nothing outside of man which enters him that can contaminate him. But what comes out of him is what defiles man, that is Tame. Because from within, from the heart or the intention of men, come evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evils come out from within and contaminate man. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Torah is so beautiful. It connects all life because all life comes from the eternal himself. When we are in constant interaction with an inappropriate environment, with its set ways of receiving, receiving stimulation, when we are with people who do not help us grow, with their ways of thinking contrary to the eternal, we are doing almost irreversible damage to the brain systems that God designed for us to have a full life because we send the wrong signals to our brains and we allow our cortex to not make the right decisions. But instead, we allow those emotional or instinctual reptilian systems to take control. And when this happens, we allow our intentions to become distorted, initiating what Yeshua said, actions that make us tame, disconnect us, from the divine. So for me, the reason that this portion begins with the Brit Milah, apart from being an internal pact between God and his people, it's that the eternal wants what is done physically to be replicated spiritually. In Deuteronomy 10, 16, it says you shall circumcise, that is remove things using your free will, the foreskin, that is whatever obstructs us, of your hearts, and do not stiffen your neck anymore. The lack of humility or pride will then be what obstructs our heart. In Vayikra 13, 32 to 33, it says, And the Kohen shall look at the lesion on the se seventh day, and behold, the netek, the patch, has not spread, and no yellow hair was in it, and the appearance of the patch is not deeper than the skin, he shall shave around Vahid Galach himself, but adjacent to the patch, the netek, he shall not shave, and the Kohen shall quarantine the person with the netek again for seven days. Our sages say that the gimel, in this word Vahid Galach, is written with a capital gimel, capital G, that refers to two aspects. First, Ga'a, which is pride, which is why pride is shaven. He exhibits and humbles himself so that the Kohen to the Kohen, so that he can be declared clean. Second, that none of the 72 divine names has the letter Gimel, as if to say that the Gava'a pride has no place with the eternal. Are we connected with the eternal? Has our heart been circumcised? Do we still have gava'a pride in our hearts that do not allow us to be tahor, clean? Are we dominated by our instincts and emotions that do not allow us to act 
with reason and thought. Let us then connect to the source of living waters and not dig wells or cisterns that do not contain water. Shabbat Shalom.